<coughs> so welcome everybody to our live talk today. I'm very, very glad to have special women from Africa online today. And we are a bit upfront celebrating Women's Day, International Women's Day. And I hope that I will hear fabulous stories today about great women making their life. Hello, Stephanie. Glad to have you here. Glad to see you. Hi. Hi, hi, Stephanie. So Beatrice is coming hi. on too. Just, just give her a bit of time. Yes, Sinta, while you're not speaking, I would ask you to close your microphone because you have quite a background noise. Okay. So, Betty, can you hear us? Hello, Betty. Great to have you here. Hello, hello, Madam Maria. I can hear you. I can see you too. I don't know whether I'm visible enough. You are visible now. We see that you're in the car. We see that you have a lot to do. So let's start yes. right away. We are online already. And I would ask everybody to put their videos on because we are already on the live stream. Very happy to have you here. Very happy to celebrate International Women's Day with you a bit upfront. And I would ask you to introduce yourself a bit and then we jump in the middle of the talk and let us hear about your life stories, your visions and your dreams. Who wants to start? Betty, do you want to start because you don't have too much time? Thank you, Maria, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, I am here to start. My name is Beatrice Mwangi. Those are my official names. I am from Kenya in East Africa. And uh, I am married and I'm a mother of two. Uh, professionally, I'm a nutritionist. Uh, though not really practicing, I did that and uh, I quit it again to another field and uh, uh, apart from that I am a Christian counselor that is where I have majored in and especially in counseling the children the teens the preteens and the youths uh, that's uh, my major focus and through that I've registered a foundation called Kiroto Foundation uh, Kiroto means dream. So I also encourage them on their dreams and uh, their talents and uh, how they can be uh, of great help even to the other generation. So generally that is who I am. I'm also an ordained minister of the gospel uh, of the Lord in the office of Reverend. And therefore I am in the full-time ministry. As a woman in Africa, I am. I thank God even for the privilege to be in this forum today. Thank you. God bless you. Be blessed too. Who wants to go next? Lucy, Lucy just uh, go next. Okay. Thank you, Madam Maria, for this great opportunity. For this great to opportunity to be. In on this forum today, on this forum today, together with my fellow Kenyan women, together with my fellow Kenyan women. Um, Lucy, you have you have an echo. Do you have um, do you have, you have an echo? Do you have an echo? Sorry. Sorry. Maybe you have a double speaker. Hello, okay. can you hear me now? Hello, okay. can you hear me now? Still the echo. I think, um, I think yeah. two microphones are open. Oh. 
So maybe somebody else goes first and you fix your technical problem. Okay. Who wants to go next? Violet? You need to open your mic, Violet. You're muted at the moment. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Violet Mbiti, and I'm a, I'm a Pan-Africanist. Pan um, what I do is basically empower women uh, and young people through Violet Mbiti Foundation. Um, I'm also the chair of the working group on uh, political feminism, women empowerment, um, women representation in African democracy, African democracy at Young African Activist Network. So I basically engage in matters on public expenditure tracking, expenditure tracking on matters health. So it's a pleasure to be here and to network with fellow women so that uh, we can get to learn more from each other. Thank you. Thank you, Violet. Yacinta, you want to try next? Yes, I think I can go next. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Ma and Maria, for the wonderful opportunity that you've given to us. My name is Anjacinta Nduru Daimuta. Um, I run an orphanage in Kenya and a school <clears throat> and I work with women in the community. So basically the home uh, is called St. Dockers and we gave the name St. Dockers uh, from the book of Act. You remember Tabitha used to do well to the community. So we just wanted to extend, you remember when she died, uh, windows were crying because she used to help them. So we wanted to extend what Tabitha was doing to, to the community through women and children. We have a children's home where we take children, both boys and girls, but mainly we focus on girls because we realized <clears throat> if we empower a woman in the community, you empower the whole community. So they are the ones who bear children and they're the ones mostly who raise them. So we don't leave men behind, but we really feel as in doctors, we need to have so many Tabitha in the world to change the community. Uh, we also have a school where children that we've taken from the community and from the, the, the singles, we give them education all through from primary, primary to high school. And um, some of them have gone to universities and colleges as for now. So we then gone for using me as the pioneer and the, as the person who is behind all this as a woman. So I feel strong and uh, I know African women gone can take as far if only we believe in ourselves and uh, just be committed to what the purpose that God gave us in this world. We are so powerful that we can change the whole nation. So uh, as I said, I, we have a school and a home and uh, uh, I think we're going to talk more as we continue. You'll know about St. Dockers, we know about more how women can do, how we've empowered the women, mostly the singles to believe in themselves and change the world. And uh, more so to the children, mostly the girls. Thank you so much. We'll talk more as we go ahead. Thank you, Yacinta. Lucy, yeah. you want to try again? Yeah, let me try again. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucy Wairimo from Nairobi, Kenya. And I want to wish you in advance happy International Women's Day. Uh, this year's theme is very uh, open and, you know, for women. Uh, the gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. I wish you happy International Women's Day in advance. Well, I'm a humanitarian. Thank you. And before being a humanitarian, I'm an occupational health and safety officer mm -hmm. in the male dominated industry, the construction industry. But I have a passion in, in the vulnerable children, orphans and widows in my community. I am the founder of One Touch One Life organization, an organization that is, uh, is based in Kenya, registered with the nonprofits that uh, main objective is to improve access to basic needs for vulnerable children and widows in Kenya. Uh, some of the things that we engage in are holding ch uh, charitable events are geared to improving the living standards of the less fortunate, engaging members of the community to community service, 
Through our organization's resource for school bursaries for needy and bright children, we do renovations for children's home and uh, rescue centers. We also source for wheelchairs for the differently abled children in the homes and the rescue centers. And uh, we also do renovations, uh, source for education materials, and we also partner with other organizations to make our dream and vision come true. I'm glad that one of my beneficiaries is also in the panel, Jacinta Nduru. We are full supporters of the St. Dorcas Children's Home. Yes, sir. As, uh, well, let's say it, I'm, uh, uh, I, yeah, I am, I'm, uh, what do I say? I am a humanitarian who is uh, globally recognized recently, inducted into the World Book of Greatness in the UK. Uh, I am a creator of Greatness Award winner. I am a family civility ambassador and a girl child ambassador among other areas that I have been nominated and awarded. And I'm glad to work with women and I'm very honored to be a woman from Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Stephanie? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, my name is Stephanie Hazel Kusa. I come from Kenya, Western, but currently I'm in Nairobi. Uh, I was born and raised in a family of eight girls. And uh, uh, that is where my passion for women and girls uh, came from. Uh, it has been uh, both sweet and bitter because of the, both the challenges and the advantages that come with uh, being a woman. So um, I am a mentor and I do mentorship for women, uh, but I have really, really, uh, I'm so passionate about uh, young women because I would like them to overcome challenges. I would like to hold their hands so that they cannot, uh, you know, get into, um, As, as, as women. So it, 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 it's so nice and it's so good to, to share and, and work uh, with other young women and just showing them the way because that is what they need in the current world. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. So I see all of us working in charity, more or less. All of us encouraging younger women to go their path, to not only dream their life, but live their dreams. And so I would like to hear from you, how did it come that you are in the position that you are today? What did you have to overcome to finally be here? Maybe I'll go first. Okay. Um, I would say uh, some 11 years ago, I'm a single mom. I got my child when I was 19 years old. And I've overcome challenges to bring in my son up. And I remember I was working in a certain organization where a certain lady who was doing skydiving from the UK came to Kenya. And I was to accompany this girl to a children's home. I had never visited a children's home. I never knew anything about charity or anything. But once I, we went with this girl and she donated whatever she had, you know, brought to the children's home, something really changed. And I asked myself, I am a single mom taking care of one. These are many children who have no parents. And this girl has raised money for her country, for our children. What am I doing as a person? What can I do as a person to make a difference in my community? And that's how my passion for charity was born and that's how I began one touch one life organization which means touch one life at a time yeah that's how my passion started great thank you who wants to go next I can go next mm -hmm. yeah so this is how my journey started uh, it started because of first of all unemployment I was trying to get a job um, way back. I think it was like 20, 2012, 
um, and it was difficult getting a job then. So I decided, okay, maybe if I do my master's in project management, uh, by virtue of me having my master's, I may get a job. So I started doing my master's. And in uh, 2015, not 2015, 2014, I tried uh, looking for a job as well, but it was difficult. Then I came to a re realization. I already have skills in uh, project management. Why can't I just go ahead and uh, initiate projects in my community? So I said, I'll just go to my rural home and uh, that is when I will go and initiate projects. So I went to volunteer in a community-based organization there called Wamunyu on Time. And I asked them what resources do they have? So one of the things that they mentioned is that they have a, they, they, they have a piece of land near a riverbed. So since where I come from, it is a semi-arid area, water is an issue there. So I'd, I said, is it okay if, uh, if I can look for resources and then we set up a dam here so that uh, we, we may, uh, we, uh, youth can also uh, construct, not construct, but they can also engage in agribusiness because of water being available, because the youth unemployment is very high. Mm -hmm. So I was summoned by the Council of Elders in my community who heard about my project. My first time meeting them, they were saying, young girl, are you sure you want to bring a water project in this community that is going to serve 25,000 households? And I said, yes. If I get the blessings, since you already have land, I can go ahead and initiate. So now, uh, once I got their blessings, I approached the county government of Machakos through Ma Machakos Water and Sewerage Company. And at that particular time, uh, the evolution started and uh, the new government uh, priority was also constructing uh, dams. So when I submitted the proposal, um, the county government said that they are going to construct. And right now, as we are speaking, um, the dam is con uh, was 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 the, they finished constructing the dam in 2018. You know, like uh, when we initiated, politics got into play, mm -hmm. and that delayed the project. But fortunately, uh, the project was finished in 2018. Uh, even the community members who live around the dam even donated their pieces of land to the government so that they can also benefit from the dam. So while that was taking place, when I was starting at that particular time in 2015, I had also uh, brought solar projects to the community because there was also lack of electricity. And so therefore, uh, women even as old as, uh, as um, they managed to get solar lanterns so that they can use even uh, at homes because they were using a lot of money on kerosene to light lamps. But now with the solar, with the solar lights, it was easier for them now to go ahead and do the activities, even young people to also go and study and do that. So by virtue of me starting the two projects, I said, oh, it's going to be a good thing if I create a platform where also other youth can also share the projects that they are doing. And that is now when I started Youth County Projects Kenya. So when I started the blog Youth County Projects Kenya, and because of those two projects, they are the ones which were the foundation of catapulting me to mm -hmm. where I am right now. So everything started from there. So that is the genesis of my journey. I started from the rural home, uh, I, got, uh, I, I got opportunities even at the national level uh, to also represent uh, youth and also women at the national level. And even right now, I'm at the continental level uh, in a steering committee at the continental level. So it all started from the bottom. So that's why I'm saying like young women, 
um, never give up on your journey. Uh, whenever there is a problem, there is also a solution. I didn't uh, wallow in my circumstances because I don't have a job, but what I did is uh, I said, okay, if I don't have a job, what can I do? And that is how my journey started. Thank you. Over to you, Marie. Thank you, Violet. That's great. And it's a great inspiration. So if you don't get a job, make yourself one. Just go ahead. Believe in yourself and make your dreams come true. Your dreams come true. And as you go on, opportunities will come. Great. Thank you. Who wants to go next? I can go next. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think I, I will start by saying that it, uh, I am a dreamer naturally. Naturally, I, I, I dream things. And uh, uh, after a while, uh, I see some of the results of those dreams. So that's how I concentrated on asking God to help me to know uh, how I can use that gift and also nurture many other gifts in the area of uh, the natural dreams and also uh, literally by um, encouraging uh, people to have vision, vision in life. Uh, and another thing that uh, propelled me to be in the, uh, in the ministry is uh, that uh, uh, I am gifted as a, as, a, as a singer. I am also gifted in the area of uh, designing and a few more arts. So uh, at one point I asked myself, how can I, how can I duplicate this to the younger generation? And in my prayer sessions, especially in 2012, 2013, and 2014, I felt a, a very strong urge to compose a song. And the song that came is Kiroto, and Kiroto means dream. So I went to the book of Hambakuk, chapter 2, verse 3, that says, write your vision in big letters and let everyone read. And at the appointed at the appointed time it shall come to pass. So that is where I drew my verses for the for the for the song. And uh, I recorded the song and uh, the song started going a bit viral though it did not publicize so much. And when I was singing the song I would feel the energy to sing with the young people and especially with the young children, them, them that were dancing also the song, the young uh, uh, generation from 10 years all the way to, to, to 20, 25. And I would uh, ask them, what would you like to become when you grow up? And some will say doctors, some will say teacher. And I would feel that I would like to work with that child or with that uh, teen and help him or her to uh, to walk the journey to become the person or to become uh, whatever he or she is feeling she wants to become. So by the year 2015, I was also in business and uh, I could feel that I, I, I feel to visit uh, even the children's homes. Of course, uh, it has been a, our lifestyle of uh, supporting the children's homes and the vulnerable uh, children. From, from the time I was young, I would see my mother giving food to the need, I mean, to the hungry and also accommodating some women who are coming around with their children very hungry. So it has been in me, it is a virtual bond in me to support and also to, uh, to help. So uh, in 2015, when I felt uh, now I am I'm more in, uh, in the ministry than in business and any other profession, uh, I decided that uh, I'm going to be visiting homes and get an opportunity there to speak to those children because they are children like, uh, like any other. They are, they are, it is only that they are, uh, they are not fortunate to have parents who are alive or some have parents that uh, dump them, but they have the brain like any other 
uh, child. So I would uh, really be pushed so much to, those, uh, to, those, to the homes and to the orphanages. And I would go there with the ritual that I have to support either with the food or clothes or any other material. I would, more, I, I would give more of an inspiration, encouragement, I would sing with them that song. And because the song is a bit uh, thrilling, you know, it is a, a dancing song. So they would really dance into that. And I remember one of the homes that uh, I have been supporting for quite some time. When I just arrived at their gate, they would call me Keroto, Keroto, Keroto. And I would sit down with each of them. I would ask those ones who want to become a, polic a policeman, they would raise their hands and we would sing with them and I would pray for them. And I'm looking for one to see some of those dreams coming through. So it has been my joy uh, even to work. At some point I started working, or oh, uh, we partnered with one of the founders and that is where I met also my sister Jacinta uh, in the group that we were together. And that is where I also met uh, Zach who has connected me to this platform. Uh, and I was working there for the last four years and uh, my, 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 my huge uh, part of the of the work there was not really to manage or to, you know, to, to do the work that I was assigned to do. It was really to mentor those talents that are, 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 are so vulnerable already. They really, they, they, they need motivation. They need to, uh, their esteem to be erased. And I would sit down with some of them. Sometimes I, I could spend the night there and I would really talk to each one of them and know exactly what do they want to become when they grow up? And I would encourage them, I would read the word of God with them. We would read some books of the great people with them and they would really, they would really feel that they are people, they are important people in the society. So that's, uh, that's how I found myself uh, doing it. And uh, not only now in the homes, but uh, now the Lord has helped us to register that organization we are, uh, intending it is just new and we are intending to have uh, camps and conferences with uh, uh, all the children from all, all, all walks of life not only the vulnerable but even for the rich there are there are those who really don't know exactly what they want to become and we want to uh, believe God who give us the wisdom to nurture those talents until we have a generation that is a uh, forecast and a generation that will also become I mean bring an impact in the latter years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. And well, it's nice that you make the young believe in their dreams and inspire them to go for the dreams. It's so easy to be despaired in our times today and to drown in that despair. And it's so important to get some inspiration and to be told you can do it. Great, thank you. Yacinta? Okay, <clears throat> thank you. So I will start by saying uh, myself, I started when I was young, I really wanted to serve God. And uh, I would see what is happening in the community. I was raised in a half country, but now finally here in the city. So I would ask so many questions how maybe I can serve God. And I, I came to realize when I was as young as uh, 11 years, I would, um, I realized the service to humanity is service to God because God has given us people. He has given us so many things to take care of. So when we do it, it's serving him in a, in a, in a way because for him, he can't come by himself so that we know him or maybe we serve him or we give him something. So I really, even up to now, believe if you serve mankind, you are serving God. And uh, while I was in grade seven, I remember sitting down with my mom. I couldn't know what I'm saying, but I was telling him, I, I see my life, my life starting like this. So I would tell him, like, I would like to get married to a man who that like someone who doesn't have parents, something like that. But uh, I really could not remember. I came to remember all these things when I was uh, 22 years old. So I grew up saying, if I can change a life of somebody, 
by that time, I'd not decided whether we are going to focus on children or I'm going to focus on anything, but I really wanted to just help someone feel that this community, even if maybe they don't, people don't have parents or maybe they are poor or something, maybe like when they are poverty strike in some places, there is a way I can help. So when I finished my form four, I happened to come to Nairobi, now the city, and by then I was coming uh, to do my, I used to do very well in sports, so I was coming for sporting activities, and the first day I landed in a children's home, I didn't know how, because we were going for a training, and it's in that place now, back in 2002, that I felt accomplished. I felt like when I went to that home, I stayed for two years and told my parents, you know, I'm not going even to go to college or somewhere else. I feel like staying here in this orphanage for some time. So they brought for me certain or the form for certificate so that I can, I can continue with the education. But I told them for now, let them just wait for me. I tell them what I, I do next. And it is in that place that I came to realize because in our home, I, I did not never hand off a children home, but uh, it's the place that uh, the first place that I felt I'm doing the right thing. And uh, it is the same, same place that I met my wonderful husband who happened to also be raised in the community. And uh, when uh, we started talking with him, uh, the, I started remembering what I used to tell my mom, hey, I'm going to be married by somebody who is called Boss Joseph. I didn't know the name, but uh, now I came to meet him. Uh, so we got married later and uh, he also wanted to give back to the community. To him, is something that he has always desired to help the windows because he was left with only mom and he happened also to be the children home addressed by many, many, many people. Yeah, so it's from the 2005, we met ourselves in a, in a church where we realized just around us there was a slum and uh, we used to do a community service like every Wednesday we would go feed the hungry, give them what we what what we had, and uh, we realized there are so many children who are not going to school and uh, coming to Nini to try to figure out what made them and maybe talking to most of them we realized some of them were just in the street because their parents died, others are being raised by a single parent who happened maybe to be. The, the other parent maybe has died because he or she has died because of HIV and they've been left. It's a, it's a slum. Uh, they cannot go to school. So we sat down and thought of a way we could help these children because it's really our, our desire, both I and my husband, and uh, I really wanted to do it from the beginning. So I felt a hand to, to extend. So we founded St. Dockers. As I said earlier, St. Dockers, the name comes from the Bible. I, I already explained that one. So we really wanted to do what the, community, the Dockers was doing to the community. But our main focus now came to children in the first place. So in that one, we realized these children were coming from single mother. Most of them with single mothers because it's very rare for a woman to leave a child. So we felt if we are to help these children, we also needed to do something to the, to the, to the, to the women. And being a woman and having believed that I can achieve everything that I want because God has blessed, uh, he has blessed me, I believe that and I've already seen it because I've networked with so many, many, many organizations. I've helped so many, not through me, but God helping me to help the singles take their children to school. So we opened a school where if we realize if this child is given education, they can rely on themselves in future and they come back to the community help the community and at, at the same time we empower now the the single parent so that they we give them skills and help them on now maybe like an open businesses so that they take care of the of the any of their children so we have an outreach program where the the, the, the outreach now we empower the parents and then they help those children and then to these others the children we take care of them we take care of them so it started just with the only seven children and currently we have over 120. We have more than 50 women that they have already made it in life. I would say they have made it because they believe in themselves and they know they can do anything in this world if they only fear God and then they get committed to what they, are, they have. And uh, to believe that being a woman doesn't mean that you cannot achieve anything, it means that you are stronger because we are the strongest people in the community, I believe that. So that's how uh, St. Dockers came in and that's how 
we are here today and I thank God because now I've reached to a, a place that I thank God I'm getting so many network and uh, the work that you are doing and I, I tell also these women that are here they are wonderful God has blessed them let us change the community thank you Yesinta great work you're doing Stephanie um I for me, it has been a beautiful journey. As I said, uh, it all began from family. Uh, we are born, um, we are eight girls in our family. And uh, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions around that, uh, especially from where I come from, Luya. They really believe uh, in giving birth to a boy child. So um, it was it was a challenge. It was a real challenge because there are a lot of um, you know the society expected a lot, um, especially um, uh, from the girl uh, in terms of maybe uh, getting married at an early age, not going to school, and uh, we also had some financial challenges uh, in terms of getting basic education. Uh, but we thank God all, all the eight girls sailed through. And uh, it is a testimony because now the narrative has changed that indeed girls can, girls can, it is not, uh, uh, you know, the kitchen is not a place for the girls. The girls are not just uh, meant for the bedroom. They are also ma made uh, to sit in the boardroom. So that is how I began uh, the mentorship journey because we had our mother and father who were very supportive to us. And uh, especially my father could really push us to, 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 to you know, to get the best out of us. Uh, but uh, with, with only uh, our dad and mom, um, we, we just had to also look for mentors who could walk us through the journey. And um, on the same note, uh, because I saw a lot of uh, issues around that, I really wanted to become an advocate. Uh, I also wanted, I, I had uh, three career aspirations, either being an advocate, being a public administrator, where I could influence policies that could favor women and girls. And uh, I also wanted to be a journalist uh, where I could uh, share stories of how and what women go through. Uh, but I got myself into the management space where I am a human resource administrator by profession. And uh, I would say I thank God for uh, placing me there because I have been able to influence in one way or another uh, uh, the, the, the welfare of the girls and the women. And um, uh, I have been able to uh, push for development of policies uh, that favor the, not, not favor, but we, we really need equality uh, because the, 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 the world is not a, a, a flat uh, field where if we do not push for what we want, we will really get it on a silver platter. We have to uh, stand and uh, raise our voices and say, no, this is what we stand for. This is what we want. And this is where we want to go to. And um, I would say that my eyes really opened when I got an internship position at the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights because I was able to interact with advocates. I was able to interact with practitioners in the gender um, equality field where um, I was able to learn um, a lot, a lot, a lot in terms of uh, the context of women's rights and um, how to articulate women issues. Uh, thereafter, I worked with, I went to delve into the community in Kakamega, where I worked and mentored young girls. And we had these conversations on women's rights and, and you know, uh, just topics uh, surrounding women and, and women issues. It has been a beautiful journey because I've really learned a lot. Uh, currently, I work for government um, and uh, I, I'm there to push, to push policies and uh, have a safe space for women and girls because uh, we need everyone on board. We need the government on board. We need the civil society on board. We need the church on board. We need, we need, we need everyone on board so that we can have this conversation and just, uh, uh, you know, uh, fill the gender gap because 
the more we sit and not talk about things that affect us in each uh, uh, in our day to day lives uh, we will increase the uh, the gap and we need to achieve this we need to have our girls uh, get education. We need to have our girls in the governance spaces. We need to need to, to have our girls in uh, political spaces. In each and every sector, we need women. And uh, that is my journey. And that is why every day I wake up, I think and push about the girls' welfare. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And this is a very interesting point you touched that we need women to be everywhere, even in very high positions. And that leads me to a question, how you deal with it as African women, doing the career, being a wife, being a mother, um, even doing church service. How can you manage, and I know myself, that I often would have liked my day to be 38 hours or something like that, because in 24, I couldn't manage. How do you shift things? How do you make everything happen and get everything under one head? Um, I, I'll, I'll begin, I'll pick up. Just go. Yeah, uh, I would say I'm, I'm not married myself. Uh, I'm single, uh, but I have uh, found my footing in the work-life balance where uh, during uh, the five days, Monday to Friday, I'm working. Uh, but you'll find during the evenings and weekends, I'm very busy in community, working with girls doing mentorship. So it is you to have a work plan and decide, this is what I want to do. This is my vision. And this is uh, my, my personal journey. Uh, this is what I want for my country. This is what I want. I, I'm contributing to the uh, Sustainable Development Goals internationally because I have said in the smallest space, you need to look at the bigger picture. You need to contribute to what the world is geared towards because if you sit and wait, no one will make you achieve this. So for me to achieve this, I need to do my part. I also need to encourage another woman to do her part. I need to encourage that young girl, as young as she is. My friend, this is where we are geared towards. So uh, the world is moving. So if you don't move, you'll be caught up in between. So you need to move as well. Uh, I would say it's just finding your ground and then uh, you know finding your passion and creating that balance because uh, we really need to, as a woman, you need to work hard. Uh, as I have said, you have to come from work, do your household chores, uh, you are expected. <laughs> and, and it is very funny because I, I'm always asked, when are you getting married? I mean, uh, um, I, I think um, the society needs to understand uh, that uh, uh, a woman of today is not a woman of yesterday. Marriage is a, a critical component, yes. But is it a priority for me now? If it is, then fine, I will get married. If it is not, um, uh, or if the time hasn't come for me yet, I, I mean, I have to delve into the community and help other girls become. <laughs> Meanwhile, that can wait. So uh, we, we, we have a lot of expectations as um from the society as women, but it's just finding your balance, defining who you are, finding your brand and running with it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Who wants to answer? Okay, I think I can go next. Oh, yes, Intako. Yes, so, uh, I said um, I'm married and really as a woman, you need to be to be very strong. So first I'll start by saying, uh, I said I believe in service to humanity. And uh, one thing I know is we are created for a purpose in this world. And uh, being a woman, you need to plan, you need to know you are strong. Uh, I, I am a Christian and I said, uh, mostly I read Proverbs chapter 31, where 
uh, who, the, the Bible talks about a noble woman who can do everything. And when you go through it, I'm not going to go through it. Being a Christian, the, the, what makes me do everything that I'm able to do after this one, to manage the family, the children, the community, and everything before I make every plan, I ask God first to give me the, the guidance. He has given me strength already, and I know I can do everything through him. Uh, in that chapter, we are told that woman, he finds the land, he, may, he makes the family to be, husband to be proud of him, and uh, he makes even, he has businesses, he do investments, he's the one to look the land, and he is so strong. So when I look at that one, I, I ask myself, who is this woman that is being talked about? And it's me, one of them. So I need to be an example to the community. So that one gives me strength to know that I am strong and I can do everything. So every, like every man, you'll sit down and ask God this week, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to do a lot of things. God guide me in everything that I plan. I make plan, but you have the last one. So I'll start by asking him for guidance and for strength because I know I have that strength. And then you plan for yourself because if you focus on a community and leave the family, then you're not doing your best. You need to give everybody the best. So plan, ask him. And uh, uh, I, the home, I have management. Like, for example, you need to share. If there's something that you can give people to do, you give them to do on your behalf. So you are going to have different departments and those de departments and departments now you become the pioneer, but believe, believing you are the one who is going to be answerable in, in all of it. So I have time for my family. When we sit down as a family, work things for the family. I, as a woman, I believe I'm the one who is supposed like to cook. So every evening I know I'm supposed to cook for my husband. So evening hours, I put them for my family. During the day, I will divide like four hours. I'm supposed to be this in this place on Monday and Wednesday. I'm supposed to go see maybe the, the services I have. So every Wednesday I have a schedule for that. Every Monday I have what I does on Monday and make sure that everything that needs me, I'm there because I'm so strong that I've been able throughout my since 2005, it's now almost 17 years and there's nothing that has failed. So I encourage women that even to those that I talk to, I, I tell them first, know you are strong. And as a woman, we are created to be the helpers. Every play in Nini, when God saying that the man cannot do alone in Nini in and a woman, being a helper somewhere, the helper does more than the, the, the one who has given him. So we are the helper. So I believe that and uh, I, I know if everyone believes in herself, he plans before he does everything. It all happens well and things come out successively. Thank you. Thank you, Yacinta. Who wants to answer? I, I feel like uh, coming in, jumping in immediately because <laughs> my sister Jacinta has really preempted most of uh, what I had, you know, as a woman, as a, as a preacher, and also uh, as a is, is a founder of, of such kind of a, of a foundation that also requires a lot of time to uh, make it uh, come to pass. So uh, I think I'll start with what uh, uh, my sister Jacinta has just uh, mentioned, that uh, from the word of God, right from the creation, the woman was created as a helper. So in everything that a man does, in every, every invention uh, that we believe so much men are uh, inventors, uh, a woman input is very, very important. So when you know that you are a helper, you'll be able to uh, organize your mind and know that in every area of life, you your input is needed and it is very, very important because God created you as a helper. And also in Proverbs chapter 14, verse one, Bible says that a wise man builds, uh, I mean, a wise woman builds her own, her own home. Uh, and with the same, same hands, uh, she can destroy it. So here call, it calls for wisdom. As a woman, you have to really ask the Lord to give you wisdom to maneuver in every area of your life and the, in the life of the community, in the life of your family, and also now when we come to the ministry, uh, women are very, very important in the ministry because when you look at uh, 
even the analysis and in, in the in the data, uh, you'll you'll find that in churches, a majority of the members, majority of the followers, they are they are women, and therefore they have a great influence even in the ministry. And therefore, if you are not careful and uh, also wise enough to know uh, what to uh, what to do and uh, at what time and how, then you can lose it. So uh, one of the things that I have found myself uh, uh, getting into uh, a challenge of a kind is when I am uh, supposed to uh, minister, and in most cases I minister online, either to individuals or to groups, and uh, sometimes even in our services, we have introduced the online services. And then at the same time, as a counselor, uh, there is a case that you need to, to tackle at that particular time. And sometimes they are also very, they, they, they are, they are emer emergencies. Like uh, there's a case I was tackling of a suicide, the, the suicidal case. And uh, it really called me uh, uh, when I was in, a, in the middle of another uh, very important thing I was doing. And I was feeling like, if I don't talk to that boy right now, the mother is uh, crying and on phone, and I am in the middle of, a, of another a very important meeting. So how do I handle that too? And you have really to ask the Lord for the wisdom. I want to affirm the word of uh, wisdom so that you know how to maneuver and also you ask God to intervene in various cases. Uh, and uh, finally, the book of Proverbs describes it all because in the book of Proverbs, it doesn't really uh, talk of a married woman or a single woman. It talks about a virtuous woman. So for my, my co friends or colleagues here who are not married, they are also being addressed by that, uh, that proverb because it is talking about a woman. And before you become a, a wife or, be or before you, come, you become a mother, you are a woman and therefore uh, it really gives us a, a good direction that you are strong you can do everything you can do everything by the grace of God because he has created you also with his own image both of us man and woman were created in God's image so you also have the strength to do even where uh, the presence of, of a man uh, is, 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 is not there. So, uh, and there it talks about uh, discipline. You have to be disciplined as a woman uh, so that you are able to deliver and you have to uh, have integrity, uh, be transparent, and uh, at the same time, have all the virtues that uh, will make you to perform your duties uh, quite well. And in the community, uh, uh, the role of a woman is very, very important. Uh, remember, uh, uh, in, in a community whereby uh, some men, are, uh, uh, they, they, they are out there uh, to, uh, to work and you are left in the house as a, as a housewife and this one, uh, it is very common also in the African community. If you're a housewife, you should not just uh, stay idle. Uh, there's a lot that you can do and uh, you can influence the community. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a good, uh, it's the, uh, the, the best time for us as a, as a women uh, in Africa to know that we have a lot that is placed in our hands and uh, there is, Nobody that is too weak. There's no woman that is too weak not to cause uh, an impact in the community. You should know that you are a strong one and the Lord looks at you as his image. So you have all the strength and you also have all the mandate to pray because when you approach the throne of God, he is ready to hear you and even to do and or to release the blessings and also the ability uh, for you to do even the things that seem so, so uh, challenging to the women. So uh, I would conclude by saying that it is good uh, as my colleagues have uh, spoken earlier, uh, that you have a work plan, you have the things to do, uh, plan your week well. Uh, for example, I, might, I plan my week on Mondays 
uh, on Monday morning hours when I'm relaxing after a very maybe tiring weekend, I have a schedule so that if I'm meeting people, unless there's an emergency, I'd like to have the whole, uh, um, my week uh, covered and well planned on Monday so that when I start working from Tuesday, I'll be able to know, I mean, to do uh, something that is impactful to the society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who wants to go next? I go next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in this line of work that we are engaged in, uh, because I'm also engaged at the, at the community level as well as the policy level, sometimes you find that uh, you get too busy and uh, there is need for you to have a work-life balance. So what do I do? Uh, during weekdays, um, I just engage myself in whatever I'm doing, the work that I'm doing, uh, because some of the work that I also do also involves analysis of, uh, of, uh, of, of, budget doc of budget documents or government documents and uh, giving my reviews on it and feedback. And well, as well as going to the community and also empowering uh, adolescents and young people. So at times you find that uh, you may get too busy and you don't have time for even uh, to, to also hang out with friends, family and all that. So what I've done is uh, I've ensured that uh, during the week, I uh, engage in work. In the evening, I interact with family and friends. And in the weekends, it's just a pure relaxation. Because at the, at the end of the day, even your body requires uh, 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 rest. So in this line, workaholic, I've learned that it is good to have a good work-life balance. And by doing so, you find that you are always rejuvenated. And uh, you're also able to reflect on how the week was and how you can better the coming week. So that is it, just having a uh, work-life balance that, uh, that enables you not to miss out on anything in life. Thank you. Over to you, Marie. Thank you, Violet. Lucy, you did not answer yet. Not yet. I think my, panel, the, my fellow panelists have said it all. And actually they've quoted the same Bible verse that I wanted to share. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Well, as for me, uh, I use a very effective module, which is a community-based volunteer program. Uh, we have volunteers who work with us. So by delegating most of the duties to the volunteers who are board members and part of the uh, board members of the One Touch One Life organization, one thing you need to know is that in our organization, we don't have payable employees. We are all volunteers. And what we do, since we have different kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, things to be done, we have people who are specialized in those areas like for instance, if we want to do our returns, we have somebody in our organization who is an accountant by profession who volunteers to do the work. If we need somebody to go and counsel some girls or children somewhere, we have people we, uh, at hand whom we can call and we are many. So if this one is busy, we get another one to take over. So the volunteer program has been working for me and uh, been working in the construction industry is a very tedious. You know, I'm in the field, you have to climb buildings, you have to do inspections and such. And by the time, maybe from Monday to Saturday, you are so worn out and you don't have time for yourself. But again, it is a passion that pushes us, that passion to serve. Actually, the, the verse that said, his strength is us, is very true because we don't know sometimes where this strength comes from. Actually, most people don't know I work in the construction industry. They think I work with children because most of the time I'm mobile. Every weekend you see me here, out there serving communities. Uh, and again, the social media, the social media has come to help us a lot because uh, before, you know, you could market through letters, you know, take letters, deliver letters and such. We have the social media platforms. 
where we market our events. As One Touch One Life organization, we mobilize people to come and give back to the society, creating a culture of giving in our society. So what we do, we use the social uh, media platform. You can see even Bitsy knows me and we've never met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and we've interacted. So we've met a lot of people. I have gotten people who have sponsored my activities whom I've never met through the social media. So it's all about using the current, you know, uh, platforms to market your product, you know, to sell you what you're doing and it lessens the burden from you. Again, what I'll mention is that we women, sometimes we give out so much and we forget about ourselves. It's also good to create our me time. You know, you have time for yourself, time for your family, quality time, not just time, but quality time. So it's a matter of balance, uh, delegating the, the duties, Are you, Lucy, are you still here? Oh, I think the line broke. But I can take it over from here. Without a work plan, without um, work-life balance, and without my me time each day, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Lucy, I, I just took over because you were frozen. Go on. Um. Initially, the role of the African women was defined by the society as guardians of their children's welfare and responsibility to provide for them materially. They were the household managers providing food, nutrition, water, health, and education. But again, we don't need to compromise on our societies, uh, you know, what they require of us. We have to make a balance so that we don't, you know, uh, collide with our society while making our passion work. So it's a matter of balance, but again, we don't compromise on what effect it will have in our society. The problem we have, I think, mostly is not the women, it's about the society. The society has to, you know, identify that our women are no longer the women in the kitchen. Yeah, they should empower us to be able to run all these activities, support us, and even make a world a better place. Because as you know, uh, gender equality makes our communities safer and healthier. Yeah, that's my, I submit. Definitely it does. And what is often neglected is in Europe, you know, we are living in small families and those small families can't take all the tasks. You need to be based in a community where you can delegate things, where you have volunteers, where you have helpers, where you can give the children to another woman just one time and, and have some me time at that moment. And you have to have a plan and you have to know what you're doing and believe in your strength. And what I hear from everybody of you, get the guidance of God. And this is what I do myself every morning. First thing I do is have my tea, go for meditation and ask for guidance. And then I'm going for the day. And I think if you don't do that, you, you, you're a bit lost. What would you say? Maybe I'll also add something. Huh? Uh, people always think that you have a lot of time when you are giving back to the society or you're running a non-profit. They think you have a lot of time. The other misconception is that you are very rich. You have a lot of money. Sometimes we are going through our own storms, but because of the passion inside us, we keep going, we keep moving. Because whenever you have a purpose, you have a vision, and it is from God, it's a calling from God, he provides. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say you don't need even to be educated, highly educated. You don't need even to be rich. You don't need even to be good looking. You just need a heart to serve and the rest will fall into place. Yeah. These are very important words. Yeah, uh, probably I can add something on what uh, my sister Lucy has just uh, spoken uh, is that uh, 
when you are serving and uh, it is from the depth of your heart and it is a God-given vision. The Lord also gives you the glory that uh, reflects, uh, you know, the, the physical riches and, uh, and so much. And therefore, you can also be tempted to give so, so much until you are, you are, you are also left with nothing because you want to please people and you also want to, you know, to see that uh, everybody that asks you for help, you have given. I think at that point, it is good also to be very, uh, very cautious on that so that again, you don't draw uh, uh, every flower from your, from your cupboard and give out. And then uh, when a husband ca uh, is, is, is coming, you are there again, uh, you know, asking him to give you uh, money for, for the shopping and you had done the shopping earlier. Uh, maybe uh, uh, to conclude, uh, there, there's something that really encouraged me. Uh, I think some of you, uh, so I had traveled to Pakistan for ministry and the main uh, uh, focus on that ministry was uh, to encourage women in the Asian countries also to come out strongly and serve the Lord and also exercise their their, their, their potential and also to, uh, to pursue their God-given visions. My host had purposely uh, uh, invited me so that I can encourage the women, especially because of their culture. Uh, they really don't come out strongly. Even when someone is so gifted, you find that uh, they are sitting on their visions and their dreams. And uh, my travel there and my ministry for two weeks I can see it as yield fruits. I have seen women now coming out even publicly and uh, uh, those ones who are in the Christian uh, community, they are able to speak the word of God with boldness. Those ones who are also gifted and in charity work, they have now started coming out strongly and we are connecting on social media and I am also very encouraged and humbled. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Back to you, Maria. Yes, very important that... Uh... <laughs> The inspiration for those who who are still sitting on their hands and not going for their dreams that this is there and with women like you we inspire the young ones to go for their dreams okay i, thank you. I wanted also to share something that's on love i what i believe again as we serve uh, humanity is that you can't give what you don't have so we normally give what we have and that's why bible has told us that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves so if we don't love ourselves then how can you love somebody else so love must come from us giving as a woman or everything that you do you do what you have is what you are going to give to the community. So if you are not strong, you, are not, you cannot tell somebody else to be strong. So we really need God, as um, Anne, you said, that you supported us, that it's God. You wake up very early in the morning as a woman. You plan. But remember, if you are to, to do anything, you are going to give as you have. So we are encouraged to love our, na our neighbors as we love ourselves, which means love is supposed to be from us. And uh, now as a woman, Whatever you are going to give to the community is what you have. So other women, when they see it in the community, because you are able to plan for yourself and ask God for kindness, they are going to follow you. You are going to give them that love. You are going to show them your direction. So uh, these women that are here, I, I know Betty, I know Lucy, they are very, very strong women in the community that everybody would desire maybe to be like them because they have seen them and this, because they are strong and they believe in themselves. So we believe in our ourselves. We are asking God for guidance. We are asking God for strength because uh, whatever we are going to have is what we are going to give to others. So community really expect from women. And uh, I've realized in, a, in, a, in, in Africa, as my sister said, the, like women and are, are not empowered like women are, are seen as if like the place i come from you are not encouraged you cannot be a leader if you stand even like for example to be like a woman representative even in a constituency you cannot be given in most cases because they don't believe in women but through us they now see uh if you 
become strong, stand and give what you have, they are going to follow you, to follow you. We have a, a women representative from our place through what she was doing to the community. People saw it and now even men believe in him. So if, when we give what we have and we are strong enough and we get committed and we, we do it with all our art, then even the community is going to see and it is changing. We are really changing the community and I'm really happy because now we can get leaders from one. Initially, when I was growing up, we could not have people like uh, women leading. We could not have people, women like Luce or Betty standing in front even of churches and everything. But now through what we are doing, through the other women that have believed in themselves and having God guiding them day and night, we are able, and I know it's just the beginning. We Let us encourage women, telling them that we were born to serve, we were born, we are strong, and we can do everything. And that's going to make the whole community change the, their perspective or maybe the way they see us. And in future, community is going to be, to be well because every Monday and every woman will stand to be who God created them to be. Thank you. Uh, maybe I should also add something that is very vital in uh, empowerment of women. You see, when uh, girls, we are starting to empower women when they are already maybe grown ups or from 13, 15. I think uh, empowering women when they are still children from the family level is very important so that they learn what their rights are, what is good for them, what they're supposed to be, even if the society is still you know, putting us under the carpet, the child, girl child will grow knowing what her rights are. Because when we start uh, empowering them when they are already grown up, they don't relate. So it is very good that even us as women, we talk to our children when they're still young. Let them empower them from the village level, from the family level, so that as even as they grow up, they know what they are fighting for. Otherwise we'll be fighting uh, a battle that will never win because if us we know about the the, the, the I mean equality and the younger ones don't, the younger know, ones don't know after we are gone there will be a gap still so let's empower our young girls when they're still young and maybe uh Marie if I add uh, on to what and uh, my colleague has said Lucia uh we should also as women um encourage our young boys and also uh, boys that it is not gender war. What we are talking about, it is just having everyone on the table and have understanding each other that indeed for a long time, we've been down, we've been here. But what you're saying is that we would like us to be at this, not really at the same level, but we would also like to have a fair share of what you've been having. I think uh, we, 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 also, we are also having misconceptions from the other gender. <laughs> they think that you're fighting them. They think that uh, it's, it's not war. It's just that we are saying we've been marginalized for a very long time. And look, we, are just, we, we just uh, need us to, you know, to just have a fair share and talk about everything and have fairness in each and everything that you do. And also, uh, I agree that in everything that you do, put God first, because uh, wisdom comes from above. Thank you. Thank you, definitely. And what Jacinta said, you can't share what you don't have is a very important thing. So we have to take care for ourselves first, be very strong, fill ourselves up with love and wisdom, and then share it. Otherwise, we just run out of everything. And women need to be strong, need to be upfront. And of course, um, when I look at all those strong women here, if I would be a man, you would get afraid whether you can keep up <laughs> with, with all that strength. And I think this is a matter too we have to discuss because with women growing stronger and stronger, coming more forth into high positions, men getting afraid whether they can keep up still. If they don't find their the place where they are meant for. 
What's your impression? Jacinta, you're so happily married. You may answer. Yes. Yeah, so I think, uh, as I said, Maria, it's one of the things that as a woman, again, we should be very careful because uh, many even fear a successful woman because they feel like uh, it's like they believe women try to overpower them every time. And uh, to them, I think what they believe is, is like, maybe I, would, I say it's a misconception that if a woman has money, then he, they are going to overrule them. To me, it's a misconception that they need to understand and they also understand us because really a strong woman in the community, my fellow sisters here will, will, will agree with me that we are feared in the community. But uh, there is one thing I believe and there's one thing I know. We were created to help. We are men's helper, as I said, from the word go. So they have the hand. There is no way, even if you work so much, even if you have so much wealthy, and then you do not have discipline. If you remember, when we talked about the in the proverb the, the proverb it's talking about respect it's talking about that the, what a woman is supposed to have so we need to respect them and to know that we were created to help them not that we are to overpower them and say like for example in a family if i'm the one who is uh, maybe like running the businesses i'm the one who is maybe in the ceo of saint rockers for example in my case that now i'm the head of the family the family the family has got its priest who is my husband and uh, if you give them respect you treat them like kings, they'll treat you like a queen. So it's a vice versa. And you really need to know things of this world. It's only that God has entrusted us as women. And that's why I said we are special. I believe I'm special because uh, uh, I'm supposed to ask him to guide me so that I be that humble woman. Though at times, again, that uh, if you, you say you are humble, maybe you are submissive. In African, we don't understand that one very well. We believe that it's bowing our, our, our knees every morning to our husband. They don't understand. It's just respecting your, your, woman, uh, your man and saying to those that are married that my man is still the priest of the house. He is the end of the family. What he only needs is somebody to help him. So what I have is mine, is mine and his. I 100% is 100% mine. Though, so I'll never say St. Rockers belongs to me. It belongs to two of us. We share 100, 100% both of us. And uh, I've seen if you do it like that, you're not going to have, like um, in the family, they may be mistress, mistress on battles in the family because it's something that you're supposed to understand. And the way you are going to treat him when you have, you have it. They say there is a say that they, they, they talk about women in Africa that if you want to know a woman, you know him when, or oh, sorry, her when she has money because she portrays all her characters. That's what I believe. It's a time that she was that maybe I can I can overrule Louis or can I can do anything, but whatever you need. The Bible tells us I believe I'm supposed to be just humble. We are supposed to talk about everything. And if I'm married, it's ours. The family is ours, everything is ours. So I would not say that this money belongs to me as much as maybe it's coming through me. So I would say, Sendokas, yes, everything comes to me and I'm the one who budgets and do that, but I include him in every budget. I cannot do any purchase without telling him, even if it's just something very small, just like in the house, maybe a few things, but the rest of the things we plan together, you make sure he understands what you're doing. And when he trusts you, trust me, all is going to be well in the community. And that goes also to the entire community. If we women are just transparent. If we are respectful with whatever we have, they are going to trust us and all is going to be well. So it's just the way we stand about balancing and planning and knowing that uh, managing maybe businesses or maybe having money or wealthy or being the, the one who is earning a lot in the family, you are not supposed to be the head. The head is still remains there husband and you need to work together everything and everything belongs to the two of you if you're married if you're not if you are not then you are ending in, you're in a community where there are men around so 
let them not, I think, uh, to that misconception, uh, because it's already there and it's something that we cannot change. We are just praying that God is going to give us, because like I know men are not trusted. And they fear women. Hey, this woman has a lot of money. I cannot get married to her. So uh, it's going to guide us. And now we are going to go about it, because it's something that is really there in Africa, something that they feel that, we cannot, but now we who are married, I think we need to portray that, and then from there, now these other men can stop fearing them. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. I think I agree with what Jacinta has said. Uh, as a single, uh, I'm not married, yes, but mm -hmm. the the points that Jacinta has brought in has really uh, augured well with me. And I think with this uh, economic, current economic in, our, in, our, in Africa, where things are very tight, the COVID really hit and things are not working out. It's a matter of, you know, discussing, you know, when a woman is working and you're working, you can share the resources and the burden becomes easy. They need to know that we are not fighting them. But again, as women, we need to discuss and actually, for those who are not married, maybe when you are getting married, if you have that passion to serve, I think it's good to have a person who shares on your vision. Share mm. with him, let him know what you do and what he's getting himself into. Otherwise, it, there will be conflict all through. Yeah. yeah? Uh, and again, uh, family civility education. When we start giving uh, civility education even to the young people, the young boys and girls, they will know that when your wife is working, when your wife is earning more, it doesn't mean they're fighting you. It's making a better future for your children and for your generation. So they need not to fear us. They need to compliment us, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. That would be the better place, definitely. <laughs> definitely. definitely. So we are hitting the end of the discussion. End of and may I ask you for your final words, everybody? Words, everybody? Uh, sadly, our reverend had to go to the church and was running low of battery. So she said, oh, I should then. say goodbye. And thank you to everybody from, for, uh, for her. Um, maybe let me final up by saying collectively, we can break the bias by starting from our families, then in our workplaces, in our schools, and in our colleges. The bad stops from home. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. I'd also like to uh, share my final remark. Um, I just want to urge every woman um, globally, uh, irrespective of uh, where you come from, do not dwell much on the problems that you have. Find how you can uh, translate that problem into a solution because the world is looking for solution makers and there's always doors for solution makers. So irrespective of the challenges you are going through, just know that uh, there is still light at the end of the tunnel. Rise up and uh, and put god first and uh, he will guide your path so never never give up never even when you see like there is no light never because life has its season there are good times there are bad times so it's not like uh, throughout cinderella mm -hmm. so it's not like a fairy tale so there are good times there are bad times but what you need to do is uh, Choose your company well. Have people who inspire you, who mentor you. You see like this show where you get to meet uh, remarkable men, remarkable women as well, who empower you. So read books and uh, always think positive. Whenever you think positive, you'll find yourself moving in the right path. But when you think negative, you think the problems that you have, whatever is happening in your family, you will find that you, know, you are not moving forward. So it's just a matter of thinking. And uh, if we have done it and we are continuing to do so, you can also do it. 
So thank you and thank you for joining this call today. Be blessed. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and to thank me, I, uh, I will finish by telling every woman is strong, telling every blessed, is strong, gifted, and uh, we can do everything because we are the life changers. And, uh, the, this community needs women, girls, boys, men, and everybody in the community are uh, all taken care of by women. So we need God to guide us and to give to make us more stronger in life so that we raise them because the way we are going to raise the community, it's not just a matter of women alone. It's not a matter of girls alone, but we raise boys. All of them come through us through women. So we are blessed and that's belief and get committed and change the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my Thank parting you for shots. reminding us that being a mother means being having a lot of power. Stephanie. Okay, my parting shots will be that let's come together and uh, make the world a better place uh, because at the end of it all, we need each other. And uh, let us uh, bring on board everyone uh, for the change that we want to implement. And uh, to our counterparts, uh, that is the men, do not fear us <laughs> because we are, we are making our, the world a better place for our children and our children to be. So uh, we are partners in this and we are not uh, antagonists. Thank you, and thank you for having us here. Yeah. Thank you for those wise words, Stephanie. And yes, let me close with thanking all of you. And my reminder for the women, the strong upcoming women is never forget to ask for help. There are always older women who already have made it and you can ask them. Don't be shy, just find a mentor and go ahead and never put your dream aside. Thank you. So thank you everybody for being here today. Keep thank doing. you for taking the time and being on this FutureLink live talk. And I hope you, I will meet you again sometime. Okay, okay. thank you too. We look forward to meeting you again. God bless you. Goodbye. Bye. Good morning, everybody. Oh, as I learned, Kwaheri. Kwaheri. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>